Um, they were rampaging along, won their first two games. They've lost their last two, but they could have probably won both of them. Fantastic looking facility there in the deep south. I'm sure they're going to come out firing tonight. From memory, he was leading last week. Are you going to be leading this week? Or from bottom with six points and second from bottom with throw. Yes and no. Yes and no. It paid off for them. They got a two, double the four, one six points. Depends what the teams are bugging with, doesn't it? Welcome to the Bowls Hour, brought to you by Somerset Retirement Villages and Dynasty Apparel. Today, we're going to talk to the voice of Bowls, Kevin Hickland. Always have a good chat with him. Commonwealth Games bronze medalist, Aidan Zitterstein. And um, one of the international technical officials going to the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham. Um, I don't know why that's a secret. I'll introduce my uh, yeah. co-host, uh, Alex Reed. Alex is this because you hadn't sussed out who was going to no, talk no, to you, or no who, one wanted to talk to you? I knew who it was, but I thought we'd try and build some suspense. Okay. Um, so right, no, I no, no. It now uh, we could just build no, the suspense No, 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 let's up. build a suspense. Yeah. I we'll, we'll leave it there. It's what's called a tease, you yes, see? Yes, exactly And then right. people stay tuned in. Now we're on the radio, I wanted to sort of bring you in that sort you of... You tease yeah. it in, and then, you know, it, it sort of they stay tuned in. Work and then you. when it comes out, they go, no, not them. I waited all that time for nothing. Um, also, though, first up, we're going to uh, review some listener feedback and pick out our favourites to win the Interclub 7s and the Bowls 3-5 events, which are, are upcoming. Um, firstly, the listener feedback, info at Bowls New Zealand.co.nz. If right. you want to send any info at all, even if you say get those idiots off or whatever, mm. just send it into that. Or any suggestions for guests that you like or, or things you'd like discussed. But you've obviously had some feedback. Presumably it's something blowing smoke up your jacksy. <laughs> We've had some feedback. I got no um I got very little feedback on the how many points for a win, a draw, and a loss. Yeah. So I'm taking that as everyone agrees with me. Yeah, I, yeah um, that's it. You live in your own deluded <laughs> world. I don't I think mind. it's the best system. Yeah. And we got qu quite a bit of feedback about uh, dream teams because one of the questions or the question we asked last week of our guests was if you could pick like a dream team of people you've played with and against, who would it be? So we posed the question on our Facebook page um, as well and we got a few sort of come through. Tony Jensen picked a good team. He picked Ali Forsyth, Peter Ballas, Phil Scogland and Russell Meyer. Which I thought was that's, that's a reasonable side. He said that'd be tough to beat, and I think he's right. Um, I liked Brett Denton because he put himself in the team. He said, Neville Risbridge, John Murta, Ryan Brassie, and myself, they can fight over the positions, but I'm leading. So, you know. Do you know, that's the one thing that I thought felt was missing when we asked people last week is no one put themselves nah. in there. And Muir, I, I was certainly surprised. would have yeah, done. Yeah. I would have bumped, I would have been the first name on the team sheet. But yeah. no, there was a lot of humility there. They sort of, you know looked after themselves and, and grabbed everyone else in. I quite enjoyed yeah, that. And there's one other you've got as well that look, looks quite good. Y yes, yes, we've got well, we've got a couple. But Murray Glassie, who um, uh, people will know as being really successful on the PBA circuit in Hawke's Bay from... Uh, well, he's from Hawke's Bay, I said it. Uh, he picked Alex Marshall, who's an OK little bowler, um, Aaron Sheriff, Mike Gurnahan and Brett Wilkie. And he said they'd take some beating and he's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I could, I'd lose count of the number of like international titles they've got in that force team, and uh, yeah, that's pretty, pretty impressive. And the inches thought they could make a pretty good. Oh, so they, well, oh, yeah. they've gone oh inch by inch, inch by inch. They've yeah, got inch. to put them all themselves in there, the whole Farno's in there. Four inches, but I think they missed an inch out, and they didn't seem that happy. I can't remember which inch was. So there's was an inch missed. missing. Yeah, an inch was dropped from the force team. One short. Mm as they say in the old game of cricket. <laughs> yeah. um, so no, it was interesting. It's interesting to sort of, uh, everyone talks about their dreams. Uh, there's so the many you know, great players, mm. past and present, that, that you could um, throw in. I'm surprised Nick Unkovich didn't get a selection. Yes, yeah, you'd think he'd be in. Um, I forgot to put him in our archives once, Nick Unkovich. <gasps> I was really proud of myself. I'd counted up how many people have got our gold star national titles. Uh, and I don't know what happened. But I was showing my friend before, because it's what you do, you show people before You're lucky you he's not stuff. still floating around, mate. He would have sorted you out. He would have. And I said, I look at this list of, of people I've got and how many national titles. And my friend said, and where, where would Ankovic be on the list, Alex? Is it, he won 11, didn't he? Yeah, he got 10 or 11. He was had the most. I, I was going to say 11. I'll stick with 11. Yeah, I think they were all Because that's in my, mm. in my memory that, that um, it was 11. And then yeah. Gary Lawson, what's he on now, 14? Uh, 15. 15. 15 open national titles and... Well, he's technically got 16 gold star titles, so it's a crazy... That's a hell of a lot. incredible amount. How's Shannon going on the old gold stars? I'm going to say three, three or four titles. But he's only 12, isn't he, so... Yeah, he's got plenty of time. Yeah. 
plenty of time to catch up. Yeah, I know. He might and, need and, it. And, <laughs> and he's, he's setting the record still as we as we speak yeah. for the, uh, the, the the longest tenure of a world champion. Yeah, I am enjoying that. It's the best thing about COVID, in my opinion, is New Zealand's had a, the same world uh, men's singles champion for, for, for five, double, five, five or six years. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's what I like to hear. Now, these um, the big competition coming up. The um, interclub regional teams, it's, uh, regional so. Uh, Sorry, is being played this weekend. Yes, it is. Yes, so uh, we spoke about it last week, but we have in New Zealand an interclub sevens event. So it's a national event, and every club selects seven players to play fours, pairs, and singles, and it sort of works its way through. This year, due to COVID, uh, the centre winners instead of going to a national final are going to regional finals, and those winners are going on to a national final. Right, so, so we've got the regional it's ones the regional this weekend. Stuff for this weekend, okay. I'd love to be able to tell you the uh, names of the people in the teams, Miles, but we haven't received. All of the names. When's the yet. cut-off point? Oh, they have until Thursday or Friday, so they've got a couple of days to go because they'll know their teams. Uh, they just haven't got the admin done. Yeah, maybe it's a psychological thing. They don't want other, other teams to know who's in their one. So we'll wait and see on that. But if you are interested in the Interclub 7s, we'll have updates on the website uh, for the duration of the weekend because some are Saturday, some are Sunday, and some are have both days. Have you got any, any streaming coverage? Because you do so many things yes, nowadays. Yes, there is streaming coverage, and we'll have um, information on that, the same thing. So there'll be a page on the website which goes uh, into Club 7s, results and you click on that and I think there's two zones which might be streaming their day's worth I think it might be uh, the Bay of Plenty zone which would be zone two or three and there might be one a bit further down south that's doing streaming. So they're actually doing it themselves rather than you guys send them you know yeah, a couple of doing sending it people yeah, out. Yeah a couple of doing it themselves and I think Bowls New Zealand might be popping down to zone two to to help them but uh, we've got places like um, Taranaki and down south and the Southland Centre which are sort of forging their own path on that yeah. streaming space which is brilliant it's fantastic well I mean the more the merrier isn't Absolutely, it yeah. you know because there would be people all over you know that want to maybe catch up on their old clubs that they used to play for or see players that, that they're keen on following so it's great sport yeah, to watch cool. on television as well. Hap- yeah, we're happy to help out. If anyone has any questions as well, just flick um, Tamara's the person in charge of our live streaming. So Tamara at bowlsnewzealand.co.nz is the email to send a, a message to if you're interested and in even just learning you know, what you need to do some streaming. She's happy to help out. And we've got some good, uh, I think we've got two or three different options for your budget and skill set. Now the Bowls 3-5, uh, it's different format now. It's the um, regional winners plus the eight television league ones which didn't happen obviously last year due to COVID so from the previous or the ones that would have played is it the ones that would have played last year or is it the ones from the year before it's ones that should have played last year should have played last year okay so that's going to be 30 odd teams when's that happening it's happening in early May uh, again, look at the website. It's early May, so it's not far away, three or four weeks away. You're not good with dates, are you? No, I just go where I'm told, when I'm told, Mark. Yeah, no, that's, um, <laughs> that's fair enough. <laughs> early May, but it should be a great event. It's gonna, it's a, essentially a national title. It counts towards a silver star, this Bowls 3-5 uh, national. Why, why, why can't we up it to a gold star? Is it because it's too sort of raw and some of the old traditionalists are going to say, no, it's not worthy of one yet? The gold star events... Uh, like a truly open event. So you get a gold star title if you enter a national open right, championship. Because Joe yeah. Bloggs can enter, a, as long as he's an affiliated member, can yeah. enter a national open championship. Whereas the Bowls 3 5 and the Champion of Champion events and the other ones that count towards Silver Stars, you either need to get selected in a team yeah. or you need to sort of win your way win your way through. So that's the difference between Yeah, the no, no, and that makes star. a lot of sense now. It, it didn't make sense to me before. I'm glad that I've been able to. Yeah, yeah it makes a I'll change because normally I'll end up more confused when I'm <laughs> uh, when I'm talking to you. Now there's some cracking teams there. Yes, there are. So I picked out a few and I've, you know, there's 30 teams and they're all good. So I've picked out a few. Obviously I had to pick out Point Chev as a team to Well, to obviously or else you'd never be allowed back through, <laughs> correct, <laughs> through yeah. the club room doors. Um, so the triple playing for Point Chev are Aidan Takarua, a junior called Steve Campbell who's had some success and Debbie White is playing. For I was, when Chief I saw team. that name, I was thinking, what's, like she's sneaking her, she's at Hinawera and playing sort of yeah. in the Waikato yeah. and now she's been signed up. There's a lot of that going on, Point isn't Chief, there? Point a pirate. There's they say pirates plunder, so we've got Debbie. Well, for the, the, uh, I mean, and that's a good bit of plundering as well, because you know, <laughs> pretty happy, <laughs> pretty, pretty decent play well. you've picked up there. Um, I thought the Takado team as well was pretty good. Miles, it's Stephen Tom's, uh, Sharon Sims, and Mark Noble, and you'll recognise a few of those names. Yes, uh, I do. Sharon Sims, when she retired, was the most decorated uh, international bowler we had, and that was her goal. So she's um, 
she's no one to be trifled with, and neither is Mark Noble. He's pretty good. He played he's played Bosch Five for the Patriots. He has indeed. Yeah, form. we spoke to him just the other week, wouldn't we? Yep. And I thought the uh, Blenheim Suns as well was one to watch out for Miles, which is Jan Gallup, Val Symes, and Morris Symes again names that people know, and I think they'll um, I think they'll do a good well, job. I, I've being said hard this before. Beat. Morris Symes just has been around my whole life in New Zealand that, since I've been here when I was living in Taranaki when I first came over. You know, yeah. 30 odd years ago he was there and he's still going strong yeah. and he keeps the greens as well so he knows exactly he's a great bowler so yeah. I'm looking forward to that Bowls 3-5 event there's going to be streaming as well Miles all day every day of the Bowls 3-5 so I think it's three days of competition it'll be something like 12 hours a day of streaming there's going to be a TV rink and the ambition is to get uh, as many teams as possible on that TV rank. And so presumably you strange. just go to the Bowls New Zealand website and you can find out, will you be telling people as it's progressing who's going to be on that rink? Yep. Yeah, so there's, a draw, yeah there's a draw done already. Uh, so that'll be released in due course and people will know who's on what and where. Yeah, uh, which should be good. It'll be a good few days of of coverage to sit. And down who's and on second and what's on third? Yeah, and I don't know who's on. on, yeah. on whatever it was. Yeah, Evan Crossy. It's a while ago. It's early it, radio. It's well before your time, mate. They did well to uh, suck out the reference. <laughs> next, though, next we're going to chat to a man who, yeah, I suppose anyone in, involved with bowls who's watched it on television uh, or on listened to it on radio, his commentary, Kevin Hickland, the voice of of bowls in New Zealand, coming up next on the bowls. Welcome back to the Bowls Hour, brought to you by Somerset Retirement Villages and Dynasty Apparel. And as you said before, Miles, we've now got the voice of Bowls on the line here. Kevin Hickland, how are you today, Kev? Well, the season's not slowing down and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, a lot more over the coming months. Yeah, absolutely. It's um, it's good to see. So I thought the first thing I wanted to just uh, pick your brain about, Kev, is this year, due to sort of the COVID situation, uh, Bowls New Zealand changed our inter-centre and inter-club from that big national event where there's 26 centres into one place down to a regional tournament, which I think we used to have. What were your thoughts on that? Well, to be fair, in, in that regard, you know, it's not... Uh, it's not new. It, yes, it's how things used to be played in years gone by. You know, if you're good enough to win your regional playoff, then you should be good enough to participate in what I would call the New Zealand finals, whether it be in the club or, or, or in, in the centre. And really, I don't see... It's still... The format's still there. Um, I don't really... I, I see it as a as a fine compromise and what happens going forward, who knows? But no, it was the right decision at the right time. How much are, I mean, you, you, you travel the country up and down and you, you're talking to more bowlers than, than I'll ever meet. <laughs> How much has COVID affected the clubs? I mean, is there danger of, of clubs going under, Kevin? I think overall, I think the clubs have handled it all very, very well, to be fair. You know, you've only got to look on social media and see the activities that is going on within clubs. Where sometimes we lose sight of things is that it's not all about your members that create the balance sheet or conviviality or whatever it might be uh, within your bowling club. It's actually other factors which create that, that, that enhance that balance sheet um, with social bowls or functions or all your business house bowls, whatever it might be, corner to corner. And so many clubs have been positive embarking upon that. And to me, that's a positive that's come out of it. Sure, it's had an effect on bar turnover and all those types of things, no doubt about that. Uh, but I still think that there's no no issues whatsoever um, with the strength of our clubs. And in saying that, that is complemented by Bowls New Zealand now having what I would call direct and positive communications on a regular basis directly with the clubs. And I think that's a more positive note to the membership. Yeah, it's been great to see, um, for me, the sense of community that's come out of this whole, uh, you know, calamitous pandemic that we're living through you know the community's really sort of got together it's been not it's always been nice it's not I'm not saying COVID's a good thing but it's been nice just to be reminded that we do have a community that sort of supports each other on rallies like uh, particularly over the lockdown it's today. been great in, yeah. it's been great in bowls but I, I, I think the community spirit is wearing thin yeah um, <laughs> at, at the moment we'll because, focus on the bowls yeah let's focus on the bowls <laughs> I think the bowls is the uh, the positive one now Kevin I understand there's a, um, a, a live streaming plan and, and which you're involved in. <laughs> Very much so. A, a, this is a big step forward for Bowls New Zealand. Um, 
with uh, Tamara heading the whole operation up, and I met with Bowls New Zealand last week. And uh, look, we're covering bowls this coming, well, 12 months. It's no longer a bowling season. Uh, we're covering bowls 12 months, and we are we are nationwide, and not just in, in people watching, but where we will be. Like, for example, this weekend coming, um, we'll be in Tipuki covering the uh, regional uh, inter-club playoffs down there. Uh, we then go to Taranaki later on that month for a similar sort of event. You've got the Bulgars you know, in the club finals. But I, I think it's something like, you know, um, at least 40 events that we will be covering live uh, right throughout the winter months uh, and, and through into the summer. It's a magnificent coverage, and uh, I'm much looking forward to it. I know there's going to be a lot of travelling, but, you know, that's fine. I don't, I don't, I don't mind that at all. Uh, things like the Burton Cup in Gisborne. What a great trip mm. that would be to go over to Gisborne and, and uh, qualify and, and watch the, uh, and cover the Burton Cup. And there's, you know, like there's the, again, the Stoke Piers, you know, a great event. There's the North South match in Dunedin. Uh, there's all sorts of events of which are in this calendar to date. Uh, and, uh, and of course the ASTRO Bowls in February of next year. So there's not going to be many events at all levels, other than clubs, club events, of course, but from provincial level right through the national and international, uh, the international arena, that we won't be having some coverage of. Yeah, essentially what we're saying is, like, if you want to watch bowls on a weekend, there's going to be something to to sit down and watch. <laughs> like, yes, there will be. And a lot of weekends, Alex. Yes, there will be for sure. Yes, a, absolutely. A crazy amount. It's going to be good. You mentioned the Trans-Tasman, um, Kevin. I just wanted to we'll take a slight segue away from the live streaming, but to the Trans-Tasman, which is going to be played at Mount Tambourine on those international um, slow greens. Yes. How do you think that's going to go for New Zealand? Uh, well, you know, it, it's going to be uh, with the limited amount of what I would call slow green play that that the New Zealand squad members have had, uh, the trans Tasman will be uh, a big challenge. There's mm. no doubt about that. Uh, and it will no doubt highlight to the management of the team and the players uh, that more than likely the the importance of that pre-Commonwealth uh, Games build-up once they get to the UK, that there'll need to be uh, a lot of time uh, on the greens. Yeah. Um, another segue, another question I was going to ask. So I've... Peter Bellis gave me something like 60 bowling videos that I've been sort of working my way through and digitising. Yep. And on there, there was a news excerpt. Um, and you were on it, Kev, and you were talking about there was someone got their bowls taken off them, maybe in post-section of the Nationals, because they were challenged and Correct. they were found to be illegal. Can you remember that happening? And if you can, yeah, you were, can. can you tell yeah, us the story? Uh, yeah, uh, to the best of my knowledge, I don't like to use people's names, but if I remember rightly, it was uh, Leo Leonard of South Canterbury, um, and, and what actually, it, it was at the time when when uh, the bowls were being shaved, right, um, to get, before the narrower bowls came in, and it was well known that bowls were getting shaved to alter uh, their lines, and we had uh, the national championships up here in Auckland, and at the time I was chairman of the board of Auckland Bowls, and uh, Leo Leonard's bowls were challenged uh, on the green, and thus they had to be then taken away. And in those days, uh, the bowls were then packed up, uh, sealed, packaged, etc., uh, were then sent off to uh, uh, Don Sherman, late Don Sherman, in, uh, in 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 Victoria, in Australia, uh, where they got sent down the chute, down the table, um, to the to determine um, the arc of the bowls back to the centre line. And, yeah, it was certainly a controversy at the time. And, you know, I'm not going to cast any aspersions of guilt or not guilt. But, yeah, it certainly happened. And uh, and I know the people, uh, I still know the people who lodged the uh, the protest, which in some ways was some disappoint, somewhat disappointing. But, yes, it did happen. And I think, to the best of my knowledge, that was the only occurrence of it in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. But it did happen on more than one occasion, multiple occasions uh, in Australia for sure. That's yeah, interesting. It's yeah, interesting. you expect that in Australia, that sort of <laughs> behaviour, though, don't you? <laughs> yeah, 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 but it was when we didn't have the vast array of bowls which we have now, and an Australian who shall remain nameless um, came up with the invention of uh, we can uh, we can shave on a lathe the inside of the bowl and make a difference to the uh, the, the, the travel path of the bowl. Um, yeah, it oh. was. Uh, 
I would I would yeah. not have been a happy chappy, I think, if I was <laughs> Okay, that's interesting. Okay, so we've got the... Well, the... <laughs> just to close that, uh, I can tell you that there was a very prominent uh, Australian player uh, who uh, used to carry two sets of bowls, uh, in his, had one set in his boot and one set on the green, and was known to, um, uh, let's say, change the bowls at lunchtime. <laughs> Okay, that's interesting. That's a good story. Thanks, Kev. I'm, I'm, I'm pleased I asked it. Uh, so the last question we've got, and it's a real serious one this week, is if you've got uh, leftover pizza, that's a conversation we're having in the office. Uh, yes, because we yeah, Leftover pizza on day t- day two. So you've had your pizza hot, and the next day you've got leftover pizza which has been sitting in the fridge. Do you heat it up before you eat it? Yes. Yeah, that's the right. That's, that's the right big, answer. Well, is it the right answer? But the thing is, the question that I'm asking is, who has leftover pizza? <laughs> no. Yeah. So okay. <laughs> I hadn't considered that. All right, well, Kevin, as usual, thanks for your, for your knowledge, your insight, and your time. And when we look forward to um, hopefully your major state of course, it sounds like you've got a hell of a lot of travel. But we look forward to hearing your voice and and seeing you on the streaming over the coming year. Thanks very much, Shebs, and I'm really looking forward to it. Thanks, Keith. Kevin Hickland there, the uh, voice of Bowls here on the Bowls Hour. Um, yeah, that's a fun... That's the the um, Because I, I asked a question oh, a couple of years ago, because obviously I'm a greenhorn, and I just asked a question a couple of years ago. Do we... Um, can you have, like, one bowl like this and a separate bowl that does something else yeah. and, like, you know, a mishmash of them? So you're not meant to... No. Is the answer. They're meant to all be the same, no, but aren't some, they? Some obviously uh, have in the past. Yeah, because you can say, oh, I need this one now because it's going to be, yeah. I need I think, a little bit narrower or a little bit wider or... I think technically you can still challenge bowls. So if I didn't want you to play with your set of bowls, I'd just go... You would do that just for the sake of it. Try and put me these, off. Yeah. Not that you'd need to put me off. You could be blindfolded <laughs> and play left-handed and you'd beat me. Uh, right, next though, we're going to uh, talk to someone who's actually won something at the Commonwealth Games. Bronze medalist, Aidan Zitterstein. Welcome back to the Bowls Hour, brought to you by Somerset Retirement Villages and Dynasty Apparel and Miles. We've now got a Commonwealth Games bronze medalist. I did it again. Bronze medalist. I can't say bronze. Just put your teeth in before you start bronze, saying it. That's all right. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I have teeth that I can't take out. A bronze medalist, Aidan Zitterstein, all the way from wherever he's from in New Plymouth. Um, how are you feeling this evening, Aidan? I'm good, thanks. Good to be here. That's good. That's good. Now, I'm assuming, Aidan, that, that, that uh, as you've actually won, you're a male, and you've won a, a, a medal at the Commonwealth Games, that uh, uh, unless you're 74, you didn't represent New Zealand. <laughs> no, I represented um, Cook Islands. Fan- means years. Fantastic. That must have been. like uh, For the Cook Islands, I wouldn't imagine they'd win too many medals at the, at the Commonwealth Games. How was it received? Um, it was... First ever medal for the Cook Islands, so it was quite a special moment for them and for me and Taiki, my peers partner. I can only imagine. That's incredible. So how did they? Um, so you were selected to play the Com Games and the Gold Coast. Did you have much? Like, what was the lead up to that, and what was it like when you got there, Aiden? Um, we went there about a week before, and I've only I only played peers with Taiki once, and that was in Cook Islands. So um, I was just trying to learn his game throughout the practices beforehand against different countries. We played Nuo during the lead-up to Commonwealth Games, and me and Taiki just clicked on well. And first game, we had a bit of pressure on us. We were playing England, but we just thought we've got nothing to lose. Mm. So just try our hardest, and yeah. Do you think, um, so uh, have you have the Cook Islands announced their team for the one going to... Uh, yeah, they've year. named they've named five players, but not sure on disciplines yet. Okay, and you're in the are you in the five, Aiden? Uh, yeah. Cool, cool. That's good. So my question is: Do you think having played on the Cook Islands greens, which sort of run 12, 13 seconds, do you feel like you might even be better prepared to go up there than you were to go to Australia? Um. Yeah. Well, going to Birmingham, I talked to a few people. They said the greens are about 12, 11, 12, 13 seconds. Practicing in the Cook Islands will be quite good for all speed purposes, but yeah, we'll, we've got um, green at Paratudu that we can make. We can probably get it around 12 seconds, 
so that could probably be a good surface to practice on as well. Um, so, you know, you've had a lot of success in um, the outdoor and the indoor game as well, Aidan. I was wondering if you could just tell us, like, how did your journey start in, in bowls? What got you started off? Um, well, I started indoor when I was nine years old. So I um, played indoor for nine. I oh, started when I was nine, played for five years. And then my nana just said, do you want to ever go at outdoor? Because she was a pretty good outdoor player then. And, um, yeah, so me and mum just went and had a roll up with her and loved it ever since. Fair enough. That's cool. And you've sort of worked your way up. Was it a pretty natural progression? As I know, um, in the indoor game, you sort of you worked your way up and you've got a few centre titles in indoor and a few centre titles in outdoor. Did it just sort of happen step by step? Or what, 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 what's, uh, how quickly did your career progress in, in the sport? Um, well, I started at Vogeltown at outdoor and played with a few good players. Um, Rex Pollard, who was a really good player in his time. Uh, Dean Alga, who's currently a very, very good player in the Taranaki region. And um started playing there and started just to get my draw going and starting to learn different stuff and then moved to Paratudu. And that's probably where it's taken off. Just the amount of talent at Paratudu Bowling Club has just, yeah, worked me up. And then going to the Com Games, that just really, really helped. Um, so you know you've uh, we've spoken about your bronze medal at the Commonwealth Games, which is the first uh, medal that the Cook Islands have ever won at the Commonwealth Games. And to be fair, I think most of the uh, Bowls New Zealand people looked on that with a certain amount of uh, envy because we haven't won a medal. The men haven't won a medal at the Commonwealth Games since two thousand and two. <laughs> so it's been a while. But are there any other favourite moments, or what are the other highlights in your in your outdoor career? Um. Probably another one was 2019 Summer Pacific Games. We um, didn't do very, me and my peers run didn't do very well in the peers. We got lost the bronze medal match. Then we go into the fours, we win the semi final, so we're in the final. And we were 13 4 down about half time. And um, Skipper played a magnificent shot for eight. And that brought us back into the game, and we won 16 13. For eight? So um, winning talk, gold there was probably a very big highlight of mine as well. Talk, talk through the eight, Aiden. How did that happen? Um, well, we had we were two down on the crossover, and Taiki uh, set one of them off about oh, three metres past. He was playing through the head. And then um, with his last bowl, uh, the three was just said to him, like, oh, just draw it as a jack. And I was saying, well, if you move that bowl and move the jack about a foot. We were sitting pretty for about a six or a seven. And then um, we played it perfectly. And, yeah, we looked at it and was like, oh, my God, it's eight. <laughs> just feel like, what? <laughs> Quite overwhelmed at that time. But so were the opposition. They were... In yeah, a different way. <laughs> went, yeah, they were... <laughs> That must have, I mean, that must crush their spirit. They're, they're looking, they're thinking, we've got this in the bag, we just need a few more and, then, and it's all over. And suddenly you, you nail that. I mean, did you see them visibly wilt? <laughs> yeah, it was a tough game because it went down to last bowl yeah. where they had a chance at winning it. Bowls is great. That's fantastic. Great stories. Okay, I've got another one for you, Aidan, and it's sort of, oh, it's not even really bowls related, is it? But we've asked a couple of people this, and it's an argument we're having in the office, as if you've got leftover pizza, and imagine that you have leftover pizza, because apparently that's not something that happens all the time, but if you did have leftover pizza the next day and it's in the fridge, do you heat it up before you eat it? Yeah, I usually do. But there are times that you don't? Uh very rarely I don't, but yeah. So and often I usually you're, always do. You're a pizza heater upper. That's good. Yeah. I'm pleased. I was told I was um crazy for thinking that you should heat it up the day after, so I'm happy that we're two out of two now miles on this. Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm a hundred percent behind the, uh, the the heating it up. But what I would do is I'd heat it up in the oven, not in the microwave, because it goes too soggy That's if you do it in the microwave. Call. Yeah. I always because I like that a little bit of crisp. I didn't mind if it goes a little bit more crispy Aidan thank you so much for, for your time today um, you know first time I've spoken to you so congratulations on that title and well done for being selected for the Cook Islands in the upcoming Commonwealth Games wish you all the best and perhaps maybe battling against um, New Zealand in the final for the gold don't try too hard <laughs> hopefully it.
hopefully that's the uh, plan. <laughs> there we go. Aidan uh, Ziverstein there, who is a fo- represents the Cook Islands, lives in Taranaki, plays uh, at Paratutu. And um, now we're going to talk to, uh, next up here on the bowls out, we're going to talk to an international official. Yes. What do they call them? The national technical uh, official. The technical official. That's yes. right. Technical official. Because they're not umpires in. Well, they're technical officials, yep. aren't they? And they've got all the rules. One. And, and we're going to talk to uh, Sue Way next here on the Bowls Out. Welcome back to the Bowls Hour, brought to you by Somerset Retirement Villages and Dynasty Apparel. And we've been building up to this one, Miles. We said international technical official, but didn't say who it was. It's Sue Way. Um, and for those who don't know you, Sue, could you just give a quick brief outline of uh, who you are to bowls, please? Um, I've been uh, bowling for about 18 years. I've um, been um, through the umpires' um, qualifications, and I did my ITOs uh, about nine years ago, um, I've done a few international events where I've had to travel overseas, and I've done a few international events in New Zealand, and I'm just a normal bowler. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like that a little bit there, Sue. I mean, you got you got a finger in so many pies. Just wonder, have you got time to do anything else other than bowls? Uh, my garden thinks I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you, you mentioned that you're just a normal bowler. You know, I mean, give us a, you know, when did you get into it? And, and have you had any little successes? Um, I, I started bowling in about 2004. Um, I, as a kid, I pestered my dad. I was about seven. I pestered my dad to take me to indoor bowls. Um, and then when I grew up, and we moved to bowls, and I wasn't working, and my parents-in-law played bowls. So I thought, that'll be a good time to fill in my day. So I started taking bowls, and... You know, once you pick up a bowl and you chuck it and land on the jack with your first bowl that you've ever played outside, you go, oh, shit, I quite <laughs> like this. <laughs> After that, it's all downhill. But, um, yeah, so I, I've played a little bit. I've had a little bit of success. Um, not a huge amount. I'm just sort of an average bowler. Um, but I sort of fell in love with the whole game. And I've always wanted to know the rules and how the game actually works from that, you know, that rule pers- and law perspective. So... Um, when I was playing up a man or two one day, the, the lovely old umpire that we had, um, you know, he used to measure between shakes, but I mean, he was there all day, gave up his time, always turned up, umpired, and one day we fell asleep and fell into the garden. It was quite funny, really, but, you know, he was there all day, and it was like, you can't knock these guys. So it was like, well, I'll put my hand up yeah. um, and take up umpiring, and then it sort of, you know, I got a bit, of a, a bit addicted to that as well. So... Um, and I see the other side of the game, you know, the law side of the game and, and helping out players. And I suppose one of the things that I've always done is um, helped out. Um, and um, that was one way to give back to the sport that I'd sort of fallen in love with. Now, in terms of being, you know, you're the official in, in charge of the rules, in charge of the game. Have you had many sort of contentious moments, do you, you know, or do bowlers just accept your ruling without question? They're pretty good at accepting it, um, but you get the odd person who doesn't like your call. Um, I've had a school card thrown at me. I've had um, somebody ask me for a call that was obviously, you know, like you could see it from the bank, whose shot it was that they've asked me to call to get a 50-50. You know, hopefully I was one of those shaky umpires and it went against them, as it was. And, you know, occasionally you flat, um, catch a get a bit of flack, which I think is really unfair. Mm. If the players call the umpire on, um, they've just got to accept the, the thing. And, and 90%, probably more than 90% of the players are really fantastic and accept that rule. Just the odd one who's having a bad day and doesn't, you know, can't figure out the green. I suppose they're still human beings, but you, you mentioned there um, calling them on. Now, I, I'm going to assume as a, as a greenhorn that... The the, the uh, skips out there can decide between themselves if they agree, then they just move on. And it's only when they need a resolution that they're not both necessarily on the same page that you get invited. You don't just shove yourself in there. <laughs> yes, that's correct. And that's one of the things I love about umpiring and, and bowls. Um, but most of the time you're invited onto the green by the players because um, they can't make a decision. Have you ever been to bowl, Sue? No. 
No. I haven't done the Sue Rossiter thing. Yeah, that was incredible, that Bowls 3 5. She was so fast. So quick. Like It was like a Shane Bolt was coming a- across to pick that, <laughs> that bowl up. I did have a very close call at the Commonwealth Games. Ooh. Go um, on. In 2018. Well, it was a game, Northern Ireland against India, and, and um, both countries are, are quite slow um, on the match and stuff. And they were working under a time limit, so they were given... Um, I think it was two two minutes fifteen to get all their bowls away, and and my first roster duty of the Commonwealth Games was timekeeper, and I thought, oh, this is going to be easy. So I chuck the two, you know, timepieces around my neck, and oops, hang on, this is these are getting pretty close to running out of time. One country put the other country on the clock. Yeah, just as the bowl came out of the person's hand, the time ran out. Um, so if they were a tenth of a second less, then I would have probably been running onto that green, um, stopping that bowl. Oh. Fortunately, it just it was just at the point of delivery, so I didn't. Um, so, yeah. so a team can come to you and say we're a bit concerned about the the time that they're taking, and and sort of put them on notice. Yes, at the Commonwealth Games, that's part of the conditions of play. That's cool. And speaking of the Commonwealth Games, you've been uh, announced, you and Wendy Sutty, the other one, uh, the international technical officials going to the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham. 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 I keep trying to say Manchester, but I think it's because it's the last time we won a medal. The men won a medal was in Manchester. Um, so I just sort of, that's my default sort of up there thing. But Birmingham, you've been selected. Um, so can you just talk us through, what does it mean to, to be selected to go to the Commonwealth Games as an ITO? Oh look, it's a it's a super honour. Um, yeah, to get to go the Commonwealth Games. I mean, World Bowls is the biggest bowls event, um, but the Commonwealth Games is amazing. Mm. Um, and the super privilege I spend about two months beforehand um, going through the law book, um, practicing distances between bowls so that you can call as a marker. Um, so honoured to be there as um, a Kiwi going to the Commonwealth Games. And you mentioned that you were at the Commonwealth Games in Australia. So is this, uh, how many Commonwealth Games does this make it that you've gone to? Was that your first one in Aussie or had you been to, to one? Yeah, that was my first in Aussie, yes. Yeah. So this will be my second Commonwealth Games. So, yeah, um, very privileged. And when you started, uh, you know, that first time you thought, oh, I'll go be, be umpire because there's this nice bloke who's um, helping out at Manawa Tour wherever you were. Did you ever think that you'd end up going to the Commonwealth Games as, as an ITO or did, were your no. ambitions less lofty? Never, never did, but I always wanted to go to the Commonwealth Games and it wasn't until I was an umpire for a little bit longer um, and they were looking for people to sit their ITO's exams and I, I did that. And then I did my first international and met some people that had come from overseas to um, umpire. Mm. And that's when lights came on and it was like, ah, I'm, I'm an average bowler. I'm never going to get into the black backs with five people, but I could do this as an umpire. That's cool. Um, yeah, so, you know, plan, plan A doesn't work, plan B doesn't work. I think I'm up to about plan G. Um, <laughs> but I've managed to get to the Commonwealth Games, which was one of my goals as a kid from watching the Commonwealth Games in 1974. Fantastic. Now, I, I'm just wondering, do you have your own umpiring or you know technical official kit, or do they provide one? So Commonwealth Games, they provide it, um, but we have to take all of the kit that we would use as a marker. Yeah. So we take our chocks, um, our box measure, I usually take my calipers, and my not in my carry-on luggage. I'd probably be arrested. Um, <laughs> Just because I like my set of calipers and the calipers that they give you, um, you might not be used to. I don't like. I don't, are always yeah. pretty tight. I don't like the adjustable so, calipers that they use. So, I prefer yeah, well, sort of the ones that you can move yourself instead of these ones with those little twiddly thing miles that some umpires use. I think they engineers calipers. What? Yeah, well, the the, the the one that you have to twist and they often have a spring where yeah. you can slide it, and I'm always really paranoid that that. It's going to give away and then be in between the jack and bowl and go spring and make a real mess of the head. Yeah. So I, I like, I'm like you, Alex, and I like my set, but um, don't, don't screw. T- entirely agree. 
Yeah, <laughs> Sorry. A, a little bit of agreement <laughs> here on the show. This is, this is a bit of a rarity, Sue. <laughs> I was just on that sort of, I agree with you on the calipers. Um, sorry for interrupting, Sue, but we're just sort of, um, it's Commonwealth Games, ITOs are there. The other thing I wanted to know is, are there different umpiring styles? So do the Kiwis have a distinct, when you've been to these international events, do the Kiwis have a different sort of attitude as an umpire, or you're pretty much, do you operate from the same rule book as it were? Well, to be an ITO, you have to operate from the same book. Um, we do the same in New Zealand. All our training is based on World Bowls training. Um, but the Australians are a bit different. Um, they do some things differently. But when we are an ITO at an international event, we all have to do it the same. Um, and we all have to go off the World Bowls um, training manual sort of stuff. Um, so, you know, the Aussies don't bring out their trammels. <laughs> um, they are not approved World Bowls things, but they are approved by the domestic body in Australia. Hmm. Um, we stick to uh, World Bowls stuff in New Zealand so we fit in really well with the training that we've had here that's good that's good and it makes sense actually um, so last question and at the moment everyone's agreeing with me which is great but if you've got leftover pizza that you've had the night before and you've chucked it into the fridge and you want something to eat the day after do you heat it up before you eat it we don't have leftover pizza <laughs> see Sue you're a woman after my own heart I mean who on earth has leftover pizza it's the third option yeah, yeah, sorry. Yes, no, maybe. It, yeah, yeah, I don't have leftover pizza. I, I can't resist. I have to finish it. It's like a box of chocolate. Once okay. you start, you have to finish it. That's an acceptable answer, to be fair. I don't mind. It certainly is. Saying. Well, Sue, thank you so much for, for your time. All the best at the Commonwealth Games. I'm sure it's going to be a, a, a great event. And I know this sounds a bit cruel, but hopefully you won't be officiating in the finals because then presumably that would mean that, that New Zealand are in it. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I, 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 I don't mind either way. When I first started, I wanted to get into that, that final and now it's just, you just accept what you're given. Um, but it's super exciting to be there. Um, they, we're, we're impartial when we go over there. We're not going over there with a silver fern flag. Um, so we're impartial. So we just um, do what we do. I believe and you. And you just make a, make a call. <laughs> Excellent. Um, yeah. Sue, Sue Wei, thank you so much for your time. All the best and, and enjoy the lovely sights of Birmingham. That's Sue Wei there, international technical official, going to her second Commonwealth Games. And it must be, yeah, it's got to be great fun. Yeah, it's fantastic. Being over it's there great. and you know, the pressure as well. I, I look at that and, and the, uh, the umpires, I just... That measuring. I couldn't be an umpire. It would no, be too stressful for me. The, the measuring would just, I'd, I'd definitely be knocking the head or accidentally kneeing yeah. a bowl or doing yeah. something stupid. Yeah, I'd need more than chocks. I'd need sort of super glue. Entirely keeping agree. It in place to, before <laughs> I started measuring anything. Now, I suppose it's a waste of time asking you the question about the pizza because you do but you microwave it I, I, I looked at you and then when I well, said I, when I said bung it in the oven you were a little bit I used to be a microwaver until very very recently Miles because we've got an air fryer in the uh, staff oh kitchen. air fryers are great and I thought right I'll try I'll chuck some pizza in the air fryer for three minutes why is an air fryer it's it just goes. a little oven it's not an air fryer it's a, yeah, it's an, it's an oven that's and called tell you what, Yeah, it's an oven. It's because my son bought one. He yeah. said, oh, yeah, Dad, I'm going to get us one. You know, so he, he bought one and it's used it a couple of times. He said, gee, hey, Dad, I think, I've bought a, I think I've just bought another oven. Yeah, it's an oven with but a we drawer. Use it, but but <laughs> we, we use it quite a bit. Mm. But for chips, you've got to have it in the deep fryer. Yeah, no, I agree pizza with that. Pizza and right. chips. So you, know, put the, you can put the pizza in there and then the chips in the old doobery. Right, that's the end uh, now for another episode here of the Bowls Hour. Thanks for joining us. This is the show for all things bowls. Don't forget, share this podcast far and wide. You can find us here every week on SENZ, or SENZ if you prefer, from 8pm uh, on a Wednesday night, uh, as well as Spotify, YouTube, Apple Music, Facebook, and, of course, the Bowls New Zealand website. We're everywhere. If you've got any comments you want to make or suggestions, info at bowlsnewzealand.co.au. And said, tune in next week for more scintillating conversation. <laughs> Blimey, we'll get sued for saying that. Until then, roll on. Um, they were rampaged along, won their first two games. They've lost their last two, but they could have probably won both of them. Fantastic looking facility there in the deep south. I'm sure they're going to come out fine tonight. From memory, he was leading last week. Are you going to be leading this week or? Bottom with six points and second for bottom with flow. Yes and no. Yes and no.
paid off for them. They got a two, double the four, one, six, four. Depends what the teams are budget.